everybody. This is Gregory from Dapp University. So today I'm going to talk about becoming a freelance blockchain developer. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So let's talk about becoming a freelance blockchain developer. And this is a topic that has been kind of popular in the comment section of my videos, um, where a lot of you will ask, like, how do I get started as a freelancer? You know, can I do this as a beginner? Where do I find work? How much should I charge? And I'm going to talk about all of that in this video. And this is a topic that, you know, I have a lot of experience with. I've done lots of work as a freelancer over the years. So I wanted to make this video to share some tips with you all. So let's start with the why. You know, why should you become a freelance blockchain developer? And, you know, I put a, a, a poll out on my community tab of my YouTube channel a little while back that asked, you know, like, of you who are watching this channel, you know, how many of you are professional programmers already and how many of you, you know, want to be. So it's roughly half and half. So this video is for, you know, each person in the, each of those categories. So for people who are developers already, you know, freelancing is a great way to get started as a blockchain developer. You know, you can keep doing your regular development work and try out blockchain development professionally as a freelancer, right? That gives you a way to see if you actually like working with the technology. Do you like tr solving the problems um, that come up that you know professional blockchain developers have to solve? Um, do you like working with the tech, the you know the clientele, things like that, right? And if you're not a developer yet, you know, working as a freelancer is a great way to get started. And I hear a lot of people say, you know, you shouldn't get started as a freelancer. You know, you needed some time working with somebody else. But that's how I started my software development career was as a freelancer. And I've done lots of freelancing uh, for many, many, many years. So don't necessarily get discouraged if that's how you want to start. There's no one's stopping you from doing that. You can always try. And you know, a common objection I get from people saying that they, you know, want to get want to start freelancing, they say, I'm too afraid to quit my job. I, like, I'm scared of what's going to happen. Well, the good news is you don't have to quit your job to be a freelancer or to get started. And, you know, I would actually recommend that you start freelancing while you're working another job to gain experience because it is a skill within itself. And if you've never had to do any freelance work of any kind before, um, you know, it's going to take some time for you to pick up on the skills that are required in order to, you know, find work, work with clients, um, and you know, build up sort of the soft skills that are required to be a successful freelancer. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to just get started for the first time and you've never freelanced before, I even, you know, I would recommend that you keep your job while you're doing that. And you don't have to make it a goal to become a full-time freelancer. You know, you can always supplement your regular work with freelance work um, to, you know, make extra money. And that's a great way to learn the skill and get paid at the same time. You can basically get paid to learn um, doing freelance work because you're getting experience with real world problems um, and you're getting paid to solve them and you get to learn the new technology. That's a really great way. And this is a great time to do it because there's such a short supply of blockchain developers. And also if you're a student, you know, if you're studying computer science um, or, or anything else really and you want to get started as a blockchain developer, I mean, freelancing is a great way to do that. Now, there's actually a prerequisite to this, which is you need a portfolio, okay? And if you, you know, are a developer already and you've worked on other blockchain projects, that's where you want to start. You want to start by showing the projects that you've already worked on that are out there in the public, you know, either at your job or past clients or something like that. And if you're not a, you know, freelance blockchain developer yet or you you know, you don't have experience in blockchain or even as a programmer, you're going to want to build some sort of portfolio so that people have confidence in your skills, right? There's different types of clients out there. You know, there are technical clients, you know, like technical teams that would be hiring you on as, you know, extra staff or, you know, a client who's trying to build a project that wants, you know, you to do it. Um, there's different types of clients and they, they're going to want to see different types of things, right? So as much as you can, you want to put together a portfolio that showcases your skills. And as much as you can, try to open source whatever you've done so that people can actually see code and be very transparent about what you've built. 
And I know this can be hard if you're a professional developer and you've worked on professional projects. You can't always just show the source code of what you've worked on. They won't you know, always be open source. A lot of times they're closed source. And this is a common problem that people deal with. Um, but it's always good to have some code out there like on your GitHub profile or something like that that you've done so that people get an idea of what the quality of work is, right? And you know, you could always take like so some of the applications that you've built on this channel through my tutorials to start off with, right? If you're especially if you're new, um, and you can use that as sort of a launching pad to build your own application. You can kind of take some of the projects you built here as you know a starting point and build more features on them, or use them as inspiration for your own projects um, to build a portfolio that you can show other people, that you can show them what you've done. A lot of times that's enough, um, especially if you're talking about like a junior development role or something like that, where you might want to work with a team to be do some hourly work or something like that. That's a good way to get started. But a portfolio is a must. All right, so how do you get work? Like, where do you actually find it, right? And there's a couple different ways to do this. You know, there's kind of two categories. One's like an in-person networking way. The other, way, the other one is through online resources. So talk about in-person first, right? And there's kind of a few different ways to do this. Um, the first would be, you know, just people that you know, right? This would be past coworkers. This would be, you know, other people that might be software developers who are looking to hire. It's always good to keep in touch with people and be constantly sending emails and just kind of staying on people's radar knowing um, that you're trying to do this. I mean, in the very least, it can't hurt to just tell as many people as you know that you're trying to become a blockchain developer and you never know what opportunities might come out of doing that, right? Um, you know, meeting more people and trying to find people that are hiring for this kind of work going to meetups if you live in a big city where they're actually talking about blockchain programming, that's a great way to do it. You can go talk to, you know, uh, anybody who's at these meetups and you, you'd be surprised who you can find. I mean, I've done this for several different types of technology over the years. I'm um, just going to meetups and you, you'll often find that people are there who will just, you know, raise their hand and say, hey, we're trying to hire somebody. And that's a great way to start those conversations. Another way is through, you know, developer conferences. There's blockchain developer conferences going on year round. You can kind of just look on Google. Um, occasionally I'll put announcements about those kinds of things on my channel, on my Twitter and things like that. And you can just go to those things and meet people. Um, and you'll learn a lot about projects that are happening in the ecosystem. And you'll be surprised about how often you can find opportunities uh, for work like that, right? So let's talk about the online resources. So one way is to join a freelancing site like upwork.com, right? And I'll pull that up here on my screen. So if you join a profile like upwork.com, this is usually a really great way to get started, especially as a beginner, if you have no experience, um, because you can, you know, put a portfolio up, you can start to kind of browse projects and you get an idea of how much they're paying and look at the actual skills that are required. Um, and that'll help you kind of get an idea of how you should price your projects and how you can get started and things like that. You, you should be pretty conservative. Um, so you, like if you just, I just, I just searched for blockchain developer here and you can even see like one of the first hits is adapt smart contract developer needed. So you can learn a lot of the skills required for this kind of job on my channel, right? So another way would be to look at actual job posting boards like cryptojobslist.com. I've talked about this resource on several of my videos. You know, I had Ramon on my channel, who's the founder of Crypto Jobs List. Um, and you can basically search for Solidity skills or developer skills. They got lots of jobs on here. You can look at remote jobs. You can look for contracting jobs. You can look for regular jobs. This is a great resource. So any job board like this would do well, but this one's very niche specific. And you're going to have, you know, a much higher success rate at finding the kinds of jobs that you want on a website like CryptoJobsList.com. So another way is forums, and I think one of the best forums for finding work is Reddit, and specifically the subreddit uh, r eth dev. Okay, so if you go to that, you'll see a uh, sticky thread at the very top called, you know, the who's hiring, and this is going to be this used to be a monthly thing. Now it's an annual thing that they just keep updating on a monthly basis. But this is basically, you know, a, a master list of people who are trying to find developers and they post the kinds of skills that they need. Um, so this is a great way to find contract work or consulting work or freelance work. Uh, I would look at a website like that. So another way is like social networks. 
And you could look at a website like LinkedIn is a pretty good way. LinkedIn is definitely a resource you can use. You know, it's a professional social networking website where you can have your resume on there and your experience. And that's a good way to get exposure and look for other potential job opportunities. So another way to look for online freelancing jobs is to actually just look on company websites that are supposed to be hiring blockchain developers. So like I've got one pulled up here, this is for consensus, and you can just see all their open roles that are listed, right? A lot of them for developers. And here's the trick, right? So if you were going to look up, uh, you know, developer jobs, a lot of times people are say, hey, we wanna hire a full-time person. Well, here's, here's a, a good trick. A lot of times you can negotiate freelance positions, even if they have a, you know, full-time hire role available. You can just reach out to the people and tell them that, hey, you know, you have this posting up. Have you considered hiring a freelancer, right? And that's when you need your portfolio. You need to get out of a website um, so that you have a presence. And whenever they, you know, open that email, they can automatically have some impression about the value that you can provide. And that sort of opens the door for you to negotiate and try to get a freelancing role rather than a full-time position. So um, let's talk about one last online strategy. And this is sort of the ultimate strategy. This is a much more sort of long tail, uh, hard road, but it's to basically create a website and create content um, that gives value to other people, you know, other developers, or other professionals in the blockchain space, right? That showcases your skills that also, you know, helps other people. And that's a lot like what I've done with my YouTube channel and my website. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily grow something big. Um, it can basically just be something where you post your findings or you, you know, you post something that's helpful. Just something so that people, you know, see that you've gone the extra mile and are actually helping other people. Um, and, and eventually, if you do grow that to be big, you'll often find that people come to you for help. And if you do grow that, eventually you'll find that that sort of builds up into, you know, a feeder for projects that people will start reaching out to you for help um, because, you know, you've created so much value. All right, so let's talk about pricing. You know, how, sh how much should you charge as a freelancer? Well, it really depends. You know, it depends on where you live, you know, what your actual needs are. And I don't want to just throw out an easy answer for this because there's a lot of factors. But if you're, I will say, if you're getting started as a blockchain developer, especially as a beginner, there's always something to be said for gaining experience, right? And, you know, for your first project, I often find that it's worth gaining the experience for and going at a cheaper rate because it's a lot easier to find work. Um, you you know you can always just like like if you lower the price of something, it's way more likely that people will hire you. Now you don't want to lower it so low that's like just not worth your time at all. But you know if you if you got you know like half of what you'd expect on a project, but it actually gets you the experience and gets you you know a portfolio piece that you can show someone else that you've done and it won't take you too terribly long to complete, then that's worth something, right? The experience is worth something. The portfolio piece is worth something, and you still got paid something in the process. And you're not just doing it for free. Now I would mo mostly discourage people from doing you know any real sizable projects for free. I mean, you could do some work for free if you're an absolute beginner. Um, but you know, it's it's good to get paid something just that there is skin in the game and people aren't taking advantage of you. So that's what I would say is if you're just getting started, I would try to reduce your rate um, to get some experience, right? And you could look on a website like Upwork.com to get an idea of what people are, you know, charging for these kinds of projects, right? And at the end of the day, you know, it's really all about the value that you provide. If you get a lot better and your skills improve, um, you know, you can even move away from hourly pricing and you can charge on a per project basis where you have a good idea of how much time it's going to take you to solve someone's problem and you price it based on the value, right? Or you could just have a very high hourly rate. You know, you could get to the point where you're building a hundred or a few hundred dollars per hour if you are really good. All right, that's all I got for today, guys. So if y'all like this video, again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.